So, how well do you know your enemies, hmm? Probably not as well as you think, but don't worry, I'm here to help by providing the origins, history, and even trivia of some of your favorite enemies. They can be from well-known titles or absolute bombs, but they are memorable and that's what matters. And while the Goomba is widely regarded as one of the easiest enemies in the history of gaming, this next one certainly gives it a run for its money. So let's see just how pathetic the Motobug from the Sonic the Hedgehog series truly is. Like most enemies in the Sonic games, the Motobug is a creation of Dr. Eggman and is known as Motora in Japan. These ladybug-like robots can only be found in Green Hill Zone and as such, are the first enemies that Sonic ever encounters. Motobugs are designed to be as simple to destroy as possible for new players, just like the Goomba. They are extremely basic, only moving back and forth at a leisurely pace. If one spots Sonic, it will try to give chase, though it never actually increases its speed. Looking at the Motobug's design, it's easy to see why this badnik isn't much of a threat. It is completely reliant on the lone wheel underneath it in order to move, while a small engine in its rear helps give it motion. Offensively, it also has a pair of pincers that jut out from below its head, making them its only method of attack but even then they aren't exposed enough to give it a bit of range. The Motobug just might be the weakest badnik that Eggman's ever created. Sonic can destroy the Motobugs either by spin jumping into them or performing a spin attack. In fact, the only way they can actually hurt Sonic is if he runs directly into them. It's rare to see a hero so overpower their enemy. Even the Goomba has more options to defend and attack Mario. In contrast, everything Sonic does except for his simple run animation will destroy a Motobug. Eggman may have realized this as Motobugs appear surprisingly little in the Sonic series. They did make an appearance in Green Hill Zone in the Master System and Game Gear version of the original Sonic the Hedgehog where they acted pretty much the same. The only real difference was that they were much smaller than their Genesis counterparts. After that, the Motobugs were relegated to cameo appearances for years. The first was in Sonic Drift 2 on the Hilltop track. There it tries to get in the racer's way. A lesser known appearance was its cameo in Sonic Schoolhouse for the PC. This was an educational game for very young children which was designed to help with math, reading, and spelling. There were two mini games as well to serve as a kind of break. One where you would collect rings and another that tasked kids with matching objects. The main gameplay had kids picking up correct answers and shooting them toward a blackboard. However, the Motobugs would appear along with Eggman and some other badniks to occasionally steal your answers. It would also appear in the ring collecting mini game to steal rings. Surprisingly, the Motobugs don't appear in the Sonic Adventure 2 rendition of Green Hill Zone. This special level was unlocked once all of the emblems in the game were collected and was a completely 3D recreation of Green Hill Zone. But the only enemies that actually appear are the Buzz Bombers and Choppers. There's no sign of the Motobugs whatsoever. In fact, it wasn't until Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1 that Motobugs returned to the series. For the most part, it acts just like it did in Sonic 1, slowly moving along and only damaging Sonic if he runs into them. Sonic Colors was the first game to truly upgrade the Motobugs. Their design was made to look sleeker and their speed was drastically increased, which allowed them to actually keep pace with Sonic. If they were able to run into him from behind, he would take damage. They were still simple to destroy though. All he had to do was quick step into the Badnix to wipe them out. However, there was another Motobug that was much larger in size. It must have had a hive mind as well since destroying it would also cause the other Motobugs to blow up. For Sonic Generations, Motobugs return to their old stomping grounds in Green Hill Zone, both the classic and the modern. They've lost their super speed, but admittedly put up more of a fight than their original incarnation. Here they stay motionless until they spot Sonic and perform a peel-out to charge him at higher speeds. But the peel-out takes so long that Sonic will probably have blasted through them before they can actually do anything. There is one indestructible Motobug though. It's absolutely gigantic and can only be stunned by Sonic. The catch is that it's only found in one of the challenge acts and mainly serves as a means to launch Sonic higher into the air. Once again, the Motobug is denied being a real threat. Their most recent appearance was in Sonic Lost World, where they became one of the most common enemies in the game, appearing in five of the seven worlds. This time they mainly stick to groups and comb the levels in different formations. And as always, the Motobugs are completely simple to destroy. Sonic can kick one into the others, perform a series of homing attacks, or even spin dash into them. Just like before, only running into them actually damages Sonic. Yet while Motobugs have appeared in surprisingly few games, they have inspired a variety of successors. For one, there's the new Motoras that act as common enemies in the Game Gear and Master System versions of Sonic 2. What's odd is that they're named after the Japanese version rather than simply being called New Motobugs. There's no reason for the difference. New Motoras aren't all that new anyway. They act just as before except that their coloring is blue and yellow rather than blue and red. I suppose a different paint job is enough for Eggman to consider it a new badnik. 
Sonic CD actually has two different enemies that take inspiration from the Motobug design. The first are Antons, which are designed after ants instead of ladybugs. They're just as simple too, with their sole tactic being to roll back and forth in whatever platform they're placed upon. They don't even have any kind of weapon. Antons returned in Sonic Lost World as well, and were upgraded with a sturdier body. A homing attack would only stun them, so a kick was necessary to defeat them. The other Sonic CD enemies that resemble Motobugs are the Tentos. Well, that's technically their name. Tentos were never actually given an official name. Instead, this is the name that was found in the game's source code for them. It's actually a shortened form of the word Ladybird in Japanese, which fits since that's what it's designed after. Essentially, they are flying Motobugs that will try to drop bombs on Sonic, making it one of the most capable incarnations in the Motobug line. Another slightly more capable design were the Bane Motoras in Sonic Chaos. They have two wheels instead of the typical one, and now have a spring attached to their backs. This makes it impossible for Sonic to destroy them by jumping on top of them. Instead, he has to roll into them from the side. It's not the best defense, but it's certainly progress. The Bane Motora even had a larger version that served as the game's first boss. While it's only referred to as the Ladybug boss in the US release, its Japanese incarnation had a much better name, Great Bane Motora Gold. Like the Bane Motoras, it had a large spring on its back, but had tank treads rather than wheels. It needed to be struck in the head five times in order to destroy it, but it wasn't the most threatening of bosses. However, it could crush Sonic instantly if it was able to trap him against the wall. Which, let's be honest here, isn't likely to happen. In Sonic Triple Trouble, there's another unnamed Badnik that simply rides in the spin coasters found in Sunset Park Zone. Unlike the Tentos, though, it was never given a name, but it's obviously part of the Motobug family considering its appearance. It doesn't actively try to hurt Sonic at all, and seems content to just ride in the spin coaster. Unfortunately for them, Sonic kicks them out to use the coaster for his own sake. Then there's the Akatento from Sonic Advance 3. It follows the same patterns as the Motobug, except that when Sonic gets close, it would fly into the air for a short time. This wasn't a problem in most cases as Sonic would destroy them normally, but a stronger blue version actually needed to be hit from below during this animation to destroy it. That would be all of the Motobug successors, except that there were two that could be found in Sonic 2 for the Genesis. Unfortunately, both were cut from the original release. The first was simply referred to as Snail and looked just like a Motobug or Anton if you replaced the design with a snail body. It would have acted just like the Motobug, moving along until spotting Sonic and giving chase. The difference was that it could travel across many different terrains, but ultimately it was cut from the game and replaced by coconuts. Finally, there's Stegway, which looks more like a Triceratops than a Stegosaurus. In fact, its original design notes referred to it simply as Triceratops, much like Snail. But because it was set to appear in Hidden Palace Zone, it got cut from the final product along with that level. However, thanks to the 2013 mobile release of Sonic 2, Hidden Palace Zone was implemented back into the game along with Stegway, and that's where it got its modern name. Despite its Triceratops appearance, I guess the developers just really wanted to make that Segway pun. Otherwise, it acts just like every other variation of the Motobug, only charging at Sonic when it sees him. Motobugs serve as a reminder that an enemy doesn't have to be challenging to be memorable. It was the first enemy players saw when playing Sonic the Hedgehog, and that's something that stays with you, especially if you completely love the game. Motobugs certainly have their legacy in the Sonic franchise, and served as a way to show just how powerful and cool Sonic was. But you never know. Sometimes you may just go too fast and a Motobug will be there to stop you. And that, my friends, is why you should know your enemy. It just may save your virtual life.